Uh, hi, Ridgecrest family. Uh, tonight, uh, I thought it would be appropriate for us to sing this one together. Uh, it's one that uh, Theo introduced to us a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and it's a beautiful reminder of the promises in Psalm 23. Uh, quite simply, the promise is this, that we are not alone. Amen. <laughs> my shepherd He goes before Defender behind me And I Cups overflow, no weapon can hold me. I won't fear. Mountains and valleys, joy is refreshing. He restores my soul. Mercy and goodness, they give me a show. But I'll see his glory one day face to face. That's what we see. Hallelujah, I am not alone. He shepherd he goes before defender behind me now devotion going through the book of Mark and we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 16 tonight which ties in with Resurrection Sunday and we know that he is risen he is risen indeed and 
I pray that even through this time of lockdown, as we've been praying for you, I pray that you have found comfort and peace and hope going through the scriptures. I pray that the Holy Spirit has been ministering to you. And I know that this time has been a blessing for our family. But if you have your Bibles, uh, could you open up to the last chapter of Mark? And we're going to get into it. And that's Mark 16. And um, this is what the scriptures say. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun, of, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not there. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There, will be, there you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Thank God for his word tonight. Now you would notice in your Bibles that um, it would say some of the manuscripts do not include verse 9 and verse 20. And as the scholars have looked into this, they saw that the style that John Mark was writing in, that the verses, the chapter 16 actually ended in verse 8. But it was very abrupt and they didn't appreciate the way that it ended, um, especially when it came to Greek manuscripts. So we find out later that there was a scribe that added in verse 9 to verse 20. And it actually relates and it ties in with the other Gospels. But tonight specifically, I want to look at two things. And I want to highlight two things from verse 1 to verse 8 of chapter 16. And number one is that I want to speak about the tomb, which is mentioned about four times in the ESV version. Another word for the tomb is a grave. And we know we know that the grave is where we bury the dead. In fact, there's an unspoken truth that death is final. Being buried in the grave is final. Being six feet under is final. We know there's an unspoken truth that it is the end. It's the point of no return. We know that with death comes sadness, comes loneliness, comes depression, comes guilt, pain, many questions, anxiety and fear. And we could add a lot more to that list. But we know that the grave and the tomb represents a finality, that death is final. We see that the ladies, as they're walking up to the tomb, and they probably have all these mixed emotions with them because of two days before this, they saw their Savior, they saw their Savior being killed being persecuted. They saw him die on the cross. And with all these different emotions, they were headed to the tomb. And out of respect for the body of Jesus Christ, they went with spices to go and take care of the body. But the concern was, who was going to roll the stone away for them? But you see, even as they went up there, they knew they knew that Jesus was dead. They knew for certain that this man is not coming back from the dead. And why did they know this? It was because they witnessed what happened on the cross. They saw the lifeless body being taken off the cross. They saw the lifeless body being put into the tomb and the stone being rolled to close the tomb up. They were there. They saw they knew for a fact that Jesus Christ was dead. And when I think about this whole scenario and when I think about this moment, that maybe when we apply this to our life, when we look at death, when we look at circumstances in our life, that maybe we realize that certain things are final. When it comes to this COVID-19, when it comes to what's happening right now around the world, when we see the economy crashing, maybe there's no hope. 
maybe we know that there's something that's final. When we think about maybe our children that are far away from the Lord and there's no hope. Maybe, maybe because of what we see, we think that it's final. When we see our marriages failing, maybe we believe that that it's just hopeless. It's a point of no return. Maybe coming out of this lockdown and our job status and we're not really sure of what's going to happen. Maybe, just maybe, it might be final because of what we see and because of what we're experiencing. Now, folk, I'm not saying that this is not the reality. I'm not saying that, well, you know what, there's going to be a magic wand that's going to be waved here. But the one thing that I am certain is that Jesus was very true to his word especially when it came to what was happening in this specific situation. Because you see, as much as the women were there and experienced the death of Jesus Christ, but the women together with the disciples were also there. And they would have heard time and time again when Jesus said that I am going to rise again on the third day. Matthew chapter 16 verse 21 says this, From that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day being raised again. Now maybe the ladies were there and maybe they were not, but the disciples were there. Matthew chapter 17 verse 23 it says, And they will kill him and he will be raised on the third day. Jesus said this time and time again, that on the third day, he will be raised again. And we see that Jesus Christ was true to his word. The angel said to the woman, he is risen, he is not here. Look at this empty tomb. We know that the tomb is empty and Jesus is alive and alive forevermore. And we celebrate this. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Number two, we see that because Jesus rose from the dead, he gave us life. In fact, we see the plan of God unfolded in verse 1 to verse 8. The full plan and complete plan of God. And I know that even in this time, we don't see the plan of God. But we know that God is true to his word. And the full plan of God is we see that God the Father sent his son to reconcile us back to him plan of God. We see that the plan of God was Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice who died and rose again on the third day, giving us eternal life. The plan of God being revealed. We see the plan of God that he left us a comforter, the Holy Spirit that continues to work in our lives and is a constant reminder through the scriptures of the promises of Jesus Christ. Jesus told his disciples that on the third day he would rise again, and he was true to his word. Jesus Christ, together with God the Father, together with the Holy Spirit, speaks and ministers to us and says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Jesus says, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Jesus tells his disciples, I'm leaving now, but I leave you a comforter. Jesus tells his disciples that I will be with you until the very end of the age. For me, right now, this, this portion of scripture brings me hope. Because of his resurrection, because of Jesus being true to his word, that I have hope. And because of that, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I want to end tonight with with a story by a man that was on death row and he found joy even through this period of time. In 1985, Anthony Ray Hinton was charged with the murders of two restaurant managers. It was a setup. He had been miles away when the, crime, when the crimes happened, but he was found guilty and sentenced to death. At the trial, Ray forgave those who lied about him, adding that he still had joy despite the injustice. He says, after my death, I'm going to heaven 
where are you going? Life on death row was hard for Ray. Prison lights flickered whenever the electric chair was used for others. A grim reminder of what lay ahead. Ray passed a lie detector test, but the results were ignored. One of many of the injustices that he faced getting his case to get his case reheard. Finally, on Good Friday, 2015, Ray's conviction was overturned by the US Supreme Court. He'd been on death row for nearly 30 years. His life is a testimony to the reality of God. Because of his faith in Jesus, Ray had a hope beyond his trials and experienced supernatural joy in the face of injustice. His joy, this joy that I have, Ray said after his release, they couldn't ever take that away in prison. Such joy proved his faith to be genuine. Maybe for some of us, we are looking for this joy. This joy that Anthony Ray experienced. This faith that he has. And folk, tonight I want to tell you that because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can celebrate this joy. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For he did not come into this world to judge the world, but through him that we might be saved. So I pray tonight that by the power of his Spirit you will experience his love, that you will experience his joy, that you will experience his mercy and his peace. And even as we continue with this lockdown, I pray that the scriptures will be a constant reminder that Jesus Christ is in control, that Jesus Christ is on the throne. Let us all bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, tonight I want to thank you for your word. I thank you for your word of encouragement. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that Lord, that we can come before you and come around your word. And it's such a reminder to us, Lord, of who you are and that you are in control. Lord, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, leads and guides us in every situation. Thank you for the reminder, Lord, that you are risen and you are risen indeed. Thank you for that reminder because of your resurrection, Lord, that we have hope for eternal life. Lord, because of your resurrection, we have hope in this life. And it reveals, Lord, of who you are. It reveals, Lord Jesus, that you are in control of every situation and that you are also in control of our lives. So tonight, Lord Jesus, I pray that it will be a reminder to us. It will be a reminder that you love us, that you want the best for us. It will be a reminder, Lord Jesus, that you hold our lives in the palm of your hands. And Lord, that you direct our paths. Thank you for your scriptures, Lord, that are a continuous encouragement and a reminder to us as well, Lord Jesus. That when we trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding, and in all our ways, acknowledging in you, Lord, you will make our path straight. So thank you, Father. So Lord, even as we continue with this week, and even as we continue, Lord, with the next few weeks in lockdown, be with us in the name of Jesus, I pray. We worship you, we praise you, and we adore you. In the name of Jesus, amen.